Wonderful. Thank you, Terry. And she will actually be back to sing right after the message. She also has a table out in the foyer as you are exiting that you can visit as well. That was a criminal who was brought before a judge for his sentencing, and the judge said to him, you have two choices. You can die by the hanging of the rope, or you can choose what's behind that mysterious-looking iron door. The criminal quickly chose the rope, and as they were tying the noose around his neck, he said, Your Honor, may I ask a question? What's behind the mysterious-looking iron door? And he said, you know, um, I give this choice to every single criminal, but most people choose the rope. He said, so what's behind this mysterious-looking iron door? And he said, freedom. This door is a second chance to freedom, but most people are so afraid of the unknown that they choose the rope. I want to talk about navigating fear today, particularly the fear of the unknown and why we don't have to choose the visible rope over that which is invisible because we fear the unknown. As we navigate fear today, we continue this series on navigating the rhythms of life. And we're looking at and featuring some of our musical worship leaders who are letting us sort of peek in on how they navigate the ups and downs, the highs and lows, the ebbs and flows of life that we all go through, things like prayer, crotomy, as we looked at last week, fear today, and hope or shame or joy or grief. And today we're going to look and learn a little bit more about Tyrion Bass Woods, who just sang our special and see how she's navigating this idea of, of fear. Many of us who are here, Ben at Hope, know that Tyrion is featured, been featured on The Voice, American Idol, and now she is one of the vocalists for the Toby Mac band. But she navigates fear. And we want to take a look at that. In fact, let's learn a little bit more about her. Watch this. Karen Durham was uh, at the Oasis of Hope. Karen found out I sang, and then I, out of nowhere, I just kind of started singing at the fall festivals in the neighborhood and stuff. And she knew Jill, and so at some point, she wanted us to, to meet. I got sick, right? Um, I was supposed to sing at Miss Karen's funeral. We couldn't, I couldn't even like go to the funeral. Thankfully, Jill was there to sing uh, in, in my place, and I think that was just another indication of like, Dang, at some point, I, I really do need to meet this, this woman. And I'm volunteering one Saturday, and she's speaking to the girls. And thankfully, she came up to me and said hi, because I'm socially awkward, so I don't just like say hi to people. I talked to her for a little bit, and she's like, I want to hear you sing. Like, I'm going to call you up, you know? I didn't believe her. Honestly, I was like, this lady's not about to call me. She actually reached out to me on Facebook, and it just worked out. I get there to our first Angel Street rehearsal, which was in the greenhouse where uh, Miss Karen actually hosted a lot of the events. So it's kind of like a full circle moment, you know? And it was just fun just to like sit there and just sing with other girls, you know, from another community and my community. It was like only 11 of us, I believe, at the time. So yeah, everything just kind of skyrocketed from there. Amen. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I? Yeah, this is not just a monologue. It's a dialogue we are engaging. So let's try that again. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I? Fear. Fear. The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I? 
dread. When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not the wall rise against me. In spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate, to meditate in his temple. Let me give some descriptions and definitions of, of fear. The first is there is a healthy fear. There is a healthy fear. This healthy fear or dread or fright is designed to protect us from harm. In fact, the Bible speaks as much about healthy fear because we should fear God because it helps us, protects us from harm. Proverbs 14 said it this way, the fear of Adonai, that's the Hebrew word for Lord, the fear of Adonai or the Lord, it's a fountain of life. Why? Because it enables me to avoid deadly traps. It's much like a parent saying to a child, don't put your hand on this hot stove because it will burn. If the child fears or respects or reveres the parent, they will not put their hand on the hot stove. How many of you did that? Mm-hmm, I did too, but I didn't do it a second time <laughs> because it really made me fear, revere, and respect the words of my parents. So when they said to me, don't run out in those streets, it protected me from harm. So the Bible speaks about healthy fear. That's not the focus of today. It also speaks about unhealthy fear or fright or dread because this kind of fear prevents progress. So there is a healthy Fear, and there is an unhealthy fright or dread. In fact, the Hebrew word really focuses on feelings or emotions. It means to shake or it means to shake from the gut. It is a deep internal feeling to shake or to shake from the guts. In English, we would say quake in my boots. It's the same idea. The Greek has a more intellectual, cerebral meaning. It's where we get our word phobos from, where we get the English word phobia. And, and it means to flee or to freeze in the wake of what I perceive to be danger. So this idea of fear has a continuum. On one end of the spectrum, you have everyday normal fear or anxiety or nervousness that causes us to continue to move. But on the other hand, you have extreme fear, unhealthy fear that is abnormal. It is unusual and often uncontrollable. So on this end of the spectrum, it prevents us from making Progress. It makes us run or flee or freeze. So the question today is, what am I running from? What have I frozen at that prevents me from making progress? So there is a fear that will stop me in my tracks, and I just don't move at all. And then there is the fear that slows me down, but I... I I keep on acting anyway. It's that fear that stops that I really want to focus on today that causes me to flee, that causes me to freeze, that shakes me and prevents progress, paralyzes me from moving forward and glorifying God and reaching my highest potential. 
And so four things, and then Tyrion will come and close us in song. The psalmist says first, whom or who do you fear? Who do you fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Who else shall I dread? And he knows this because he's being honest with himself. And if I'm honest with myself as well, sometimes I dread the opinions of people more than the opinion of God. Sometimes I'm more concerned, I fear that people may not like me or that people's opinion of me is more important than God's thought about me. The psalmist says, who out there are you fearing more than what God is thinking about you? Jesus says it this way, do not fear Flee from, freeze, shake from the gut those who kill the body and are unable to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell if necessary. So who do I fear? Is there some person, some friend, some family member, someone that I work with, a boss, somebody that causes me not to make progress that I dread even more than the opinion of God. Who are you running from? Here's a second one. Well, what do you fear? What do you fear? There are a litany of things that this is not an exhaustive list, but it will begin to help us understand. I want you to look at these and then Put an asterisk, a star by the one that impacts you the most. When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries, and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamped against me, my heart will not fear, shake from the gut, quake in my boots, flee or freeze. Here are some, the unknown, that's one. The unknown will cause me to fear. Unknown of the future, uncertainties of a present future. What I can't see can actually cripple me and prevent me from moving forward. Here's another one, change. Change of a job, of a city, or a church, or change of any major kind. I fear sometimes Changing, if the Lord lets me live, September the 1st will be nine years since I moved to Memphis. I didn't want to leave a little town in Texas called Houston. It was my home. But I did. I feared change. Now, praise God, I listened to him for once, maybe twice, and I hope I die in Memphis. I don't want to go nowhere else. But I almost missed it because I feared change, which prevents progress. Here's another one. Loss. Sometimes I fear loss. When I make certain decisions or take certain stances, I can lose position. I can lose prestige. I may lose power. Some of us fear that when we take certain stands, being a Jesus follower in this culture, we're going to lose something. So loss is an issue. I was speaking to uh, a lady, and I was encouraging her because she was in a physically abusive situation that God did not intend for her and her children to be in that situation. We could help her, but because of the fear of loss, she didn't want to change. I may be speaking to somebody. Failure, failure. It's a common fear. 
I don't want to fail, so I don't really try. Is that somebody? Here's another one. Sickness or death. When you get a diagnosis that will change the way you live forever, it changes the status quo. I have two choices. I'm either going to freeze, flee, that is deny it, or I'm going to fight it. Sickness or death or diagnosis that changes my life as I know it can cause me not to make progress. Here's the last one. Abandonment or loneliness. I fear being abandoned or alone. The psalmist said it this way, even if father and mother forsake you, the Lord will take you up. He uses this extreme example because very few fathers and mothers will forsake their children. And he was saying, even if the ones who love you most abandon you, I'm right there to take you up. Sometimes I don't make certain decisions because I fear being abandoned or alone. And I love this allegory, if you allow me to read it. It's an allegory, but it has axioms of truth in it. A young buffalo by the name of Walter, he asked his dad, if there's anything that I should be afraid of, he said, only the lions, my son. Well, if I ever see one, I'll run as fast as I can, said Walter. No, that's the worst thing you can do. He said, I don't understand. They are strong and they're scary and they'll kill me. But the dad explained, Walter, if you run, the lions are too fast and they will catch you. Then they will swipe you with their powerful paw, jump on your unprotected back, and bring you down. So what should I do? The young buffalo asked. He said, son, if you ever see a lion, stand your ground and show him that you're not afraid. He said, but dad, I am afraid. <laughs> he said, I know, but act like you're not. If he doesn't move away, then show him your sharp horns and stomp the ground with your hoofs. If that doesn't work, move slowly toward him. And if the lion refuses to move away, then charge him and hit him with everything you have. He said, that's crazy. You said he's strong and he will attack me back. And he said, look around, Walter. And when he looked around, he saw the rest of the herd, about 200 massive buffalo beasts, beasts all armed with sharp horns and, and huge shoulders. He said, son, if you're ever afraid, know that you are not alone. We're here. If you panic and run from your fears, we can't help you. But if you charge toward them, we'll all charge right behind you. And the young buffalo breathed a sigh of relief. I, I think I understand that. I like that because we all have to navigate fears in our lives, whether it's uncertainty, that which is unknown, change, loss, sickness, death, abandonment. But know this. He is with us. We're not alone. And we are with you. You're not alone. I like that. So I'm going to pause right now and just say, look around. Now, I mean, I'm, telling you, I'm not going to go on if you don't look around, <laughs> side to side, and look in the back. He is with you, and we are with you. If you charge. We'll be right behind you. Amen. Amen. Let's hear a little bit more about Tyrion's story. Watch this. I sang uh, I Need Theo growing up a lot in church. I need Theo, I need thee every I need thee, oh, bless 
me now. Lord Jesus. God moment every time that song was played or every time I got to sing that song. Yeah. Mm. Fear. <laughs> Fear is, uh, man, it's actually like this massive beast that I can't defeat on my own. I mean, even here today, it's like as simple as trying to figure out if I'm gonna get a lift ride out here or actually get in the car and be brave and drive. I've seen how fear has affected just my day to day, you know? And of course some days are, are better than others. Um, whenever I'm dealing with something, I'm not one to just like run to the Lord in that. I, I tend to draw away. I, I don't want to deal with it right now. I've also learned like when you're afraid of something, that means you actually got to do it. So I did The Voice, right? I was flown out to LA, but then got cut off right before they filmed the blind auditions. So I go home, I'm all sad. I check my email and then <laughs> there's an email from uh, the producer. He's like, I work for American Idol now, just wondering if you know, you'd be interested in doing a private audition with us in Nashville. Sure, <laughs> why not? I mean, why would I say no, right? And I made it through that first week of Hollywood rounds, and it was when I was flown back out there that things got a little rough, you know? And so after Idol, Jill and I were sitting, I think we were at a hotel or something, and she was like, we gotta get you on Toby Max team. And so it was just to sign to Goatee as un under like an artist development deal, and then Toby found out that his background vocalist would eventually transition away from Diverse City. Dan called Jill and was like, do you think Terry would be interested in doing the Canada run? When she brought it up to me, I was like, uh, yes, like a thousand times yes, like let's go. So, so it just like worked out. It's not just American Idol that you can run into the temptation of making it about you. I mean, that's everywhere. It's in the Christian music industry as well. You know, you have to put it back into perspective and understand like, who got you here in the first place, you know? If God got me here, then why the heck would I make this about me? And there's growth for sure, right? Like the amount of joy I get after conquering a fear. And so every little experience of choosing to conquer fear, I take, take that little lesson <laughs> and add it to the next, you know, uh, next thing. And you also allow the Lord to like pour out his peace on you, you know? It's trusting still just that Jesus is like way more powerful than that. And every day it's something I have to give over and give up to him. So why do you fear? Why do I fear? The psalmist says it, it really comes down to what I meditate on the most and where I meditate at really comes down to this one thing have I asked of the Lord and that will I seek that I may dwell dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate to meditate in his temple the psalmist says this when I meditate and dwell on him then it eases my fears, my fright, my desire to flee or to shake. But when I meditate on the fear, the unknown, my inadequacies, then it freezes me and prevents me from making progress and moving to my highest potential. So what am I meditating on? It is true that I am what I eat. But I also am what I think, and I am what I think about most of the time. So what am I meditating on? When I meditate on him, particularly among the people of God, then it eases my fears, as Tyrion said. And here's the last one. Why not fear? Why not fear? It's human to do so, but... Why don't I have to shake from the guts or quake in my boots or flee or run from something? Why? Because the Lord is with me. That's what the psalmist said. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So who, what person do I have to fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. 
So whom shall I be afraid? Why not be afraid? Because he that is for me is more than anything that can be against me. Why do I not have to fear? Jesus reminded us with his disciples in Matthew 10. I love this. I'll close with this verse. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? That is two for one. That's cheap. And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So do not fear, because you are more valuable than many sparrows. So if God is watching a commodity like a sparrow, Surely he is watching the crowning glory of his creation, which are human beings. In fact, he says, Rufus, I'm counting the very hairs that are on your head. Now, he don't have to count as much today for me, <laughs> but, but, but he is counting the very hairs on my head. Scientists tell us that the average African-American has about 70 to 80 aggregates of hair. The average Caucasian about 90 to 100,000 aggregates of hair. The average Asian about 100 to 120,000 aggregates of hair. And yet they fall in and fall out every day. And God keeps a running count of the hairs on my head. That's why I don't have to fear. He knows. I just have to acknowledge that I need him. I'll close with this. Ann Sherwood Hawks is the author of the prolific Christian hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour, that many of us are familiar with, lived in the 19th century. One biographer writes that like many females, Ann was an ordinary woman, wife and a mother practicing the presence of an extraordinary God. She was born in Hop, uh, Hoosick, New York on 28 May. But from a young age, she was gifted in writing poetry. Anne writes this. She says, one day, as a young wife and mother of 37 years of age, I was busy just doing my regular chores. And suddenly, I became so filled with a sense of his nearness that I wondered how can anyone live without him, whether in joy or in pain. And these words ushered into my mind, I need thee every hour. So she gave the lyrics to her pastor, Robert Laurie, who was a known hymn writer, and he wrote the music for I Need Thee. In 1857, at the age of 24, she married Charles H. Hawks, they lived in Brooklyn, New York, and they had three children, and they did indeed worship at the Hanson Place Baptist Church where Pastor Lowry shepherded. And he encouraged her to write more hymns and promised that I'll write the music if you write the song. But in 1888, her husband Charles died, and she moved to Bennington, Vermont to live with her daughter and son-in-law, and then she wrote this. I didn't really understand at 37 years old why this hymn had touched and comforted so many others. But when I suffered the great loss of Charles to death and dreaded life's uncertainties, then I better understood the comforting power in the song which I had been permitted to write in my hour of sweet serenity and peace and lived 30 more years after widowhood and over her lifetime wrote over 400 hymns, dying at the age of 82. So whether you need God the Father for ordinary chores that you have to do, we all have to do from day to day, whether you need him to parent your children well, whether you may need him to parent your parents well, as many of us are having to do, whether you need him to help you reach peak performance in whatever profession he has given you, whether you need him to help guide you through some current calamity, 
He is with you and we are with you. I simply have to acknowledge that I need you. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious God, our Father, we do thank you that we can navigate the fears of life. There is nothing that does have to cause us to so shake from our gut or quake in our boots to prevent progress. Nothing, if we meditate on you, that will cause us to flee or to freeze and not reach our highest potential. So help us in this temple and out of it to indeed dwell, meditate, think about you. Because I am what I think, and I am what I think about most of the time. Thank you that you count the very hairs on our heads, which means that you are concerned with the larger issues of the crowning glory of your creation. Save somebody today from debilitating, paralyzing fear in some area and let them cry out today, I need thee. In the name of the King of kings and Lord of lords, we pray, amen. My soul says yes, 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 yes. My soul.
Now unto him who is able this week to keep us from falling in our joys and our sorrows and our laughter and our tears and our work and our leisure until he allows us to meet again. All who agreed said, Amen. touch at least six people before you leave.